protests in the central square of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Hundreds of thousands took to the streets in peaceful demonstrations, which turned violent. Protesters pitted against the police and the state. A popular uprising in the capital that ousted the pro-Russian president. Six months on and the central square is calm. Armoured vehicles now a plaything for children. But the barricades remain, a reminder of recent history. Memorials for those that lost their lives fighting to oust the regime. But this is now a country split in two. Separatists have taken control of key cities in the east and many have fled. We met with our colleagues in Kiev, following up on allegations of abduction and torture. We've been provided with a list of more than 100 individuals, journalists, activists, protesters, held captive, beaten and tortured by armed groups in the east. Hannah, a pro-Ukrainian activist, fled to Kiev in early June. She's now receiving help at this local hospital. Here, volunteers distribute medical supplies donated to help the ever-increasing number of injured fleeing from the east. She was lifted from her flat in Donetsk by masked gunmen and taken for interrogation. My face was smashed. He punched me in the face with his fist. He was trying to beat me everywhere. I was covering myself with my hands. He cut my hands and arms with a knife. It was just the beginning. I thought I might be killed. When someone points a gun at you and says, I'm going to kill you, and there's nothing you can do, you think it's going to happen. Hannah describes how the blade sliced off the skin of her finger, peeling it like an orange. And then she was forced to write a separatist slogan on the wall in her own blood. The man who was brutalising me, and us, he said, write with your blood on the wall. I love Donbass. And if you can't do this, if you run out of blood, I will shoot you. So I had this open wound with skin flapping off. I took the blood from the wound and wrote with my left hand on the wall. Hannah was freed after six days in a hostage exchange. There is an ever-increasing number arriving from the east to Kiev. They are living with friends, family, sharing apartments, bedding down wherever they can. We met Sasha on the outskirts of the city. He arrived here just ten days ago. He was involved in protests in Luhansk. He told us how he was accosted at gunpoint on June the 12th, taken to the Central Intelligence Building, where he was tortured repeatedly for 24 hours, beaten all over his body until he was unconscious, electrocuted, burnt with a cigarette. After half, half hour, of sort of 40 minutes, you don't feel the pain. So they started to beat me by electricity. They even took a cigarettes, they were uh, stabbing a cigarettes by my leg and then uh, stabbed another cigarette in that hole in my leg. After the interrogation, he was kept in a basement. I was laying uh, in the basement, the door opened and one guy with a gun put it put the gun to my head and said to go straight the corridor and don't say anything. Uh, while I was walking through the corridor, uh, people, armed people who were there, they told me goodbye, they are going to kill you, so... Sasha was not shot. He was freed after his father paid a $60,000 ransom. He was bundled onto a train bound for Kiev, still wearing his blood-stained clothes. Sasha and Hannah are now safe in Kiev, but theirs is only one side of the story. There are allegations of abuses on both sides of the divide. For now, they are trying to rebuild their lives for a future which, like Ukraine's, is far from certain.